Thanks for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, share, and like. Thank you very much. So I was visiting my son in Dallas and we went to Micro Center and they had the Raspberry Pi 4 there. It was the 4th of July and so I was feeling festive and I went ahead and bought it. Look at the specs on this thing. Pretty cool. Make sure you get the Raspberry Pi DC adapter. First of all, this is the USB-C port. Second of all, this is a 3 amp adapter and you're not going to find something like this commonly just anywhere and you don't want to underpower these things. I also read that the Raspberry Pi 4 runs really hot, so I went ahead and got some heat sinks. And because this is micro HDMI, you're going to need a micro HDMI to HDMI adapter unless you're already converted to micro HDMI wherever you're at. So let's go ahead and burn an image on a micro SD card. I'm using a decent 16 gigabyte Patriot SD card and we're downloading the Raspbian image here and this is the full Raspbian Buster with desktop and recommended software image. They say because it's such a large zip you might need a special zip but I didn't have any problem with server 2016 build here unzipping it. Now you need an application to burn the image to the cards. So we're using this Bellina Etcher. Demonstrate that here. You select your image right there. I've already downloaded it. I'm just going to double check, make sure we got the right card. Now we're ready to flash. This took quite a amount of time, so I've cropped an awful lot out here. It writes the image out, and then it validates the image. So you're looking at 20 minutes or more just watching this two progress indicators go by. And then once you're done, you're going to get a warning saying, hey, I can't read this card. Do you want to format it? Well, because you just got through writing a Linux image to the card, you don't want to format it because it's already formatted and it's got Linux on it. So don't format it. You can just close that. So I've taken that SD card and inserted it into my Raspberry Pi 4. You can see the other hookups here and the heat sinks are in place. That's my HDMI adapter. Of course, here's my nifty Raspberry Pi power supply. And make sure to check out my video about this AGP Tech HDMI video capture. Got a couple of videos on that. It's pretty cool. So we're powering things up and I'm going to plug in my USB key here. Get ready to fire up the Raspberry Pi. The AGP Tech will not start recording if there's no input signal. So that's one of the things I had to work quickly with here, trying to capture every moment of the Raspberry Pi boot, and it's not quite possible. I'm just finishing up the HDMI hookups here. Okay, time to power up the Pi, and we'll start recording. Of course, I've got a mouse and a keyboard hooked up here. Got a bunch of USB ports there, two USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, got that 32 inch curved monitor. This is at my standing workstation. Okay, here we go. So the initial setup is language and regional settings, keyboard, etc. And we're going to hook up to Wi-Fi. And we reboot and we're back again. So uh, we wanted to take a look at installing FreeCAD on Raspbian on the Raspberry Pi 4. There's a couple articles here. I'll link to them below.
One of them will talk about FreeCAD on Raspbian, and the other article talks about why it doesn't work on Raspberry Pi 4. Too bad I didn't discover that one first. So anyway, I've already tried this before, and I've done the full update, and the FreeCAD thing didn't work on Raspberry Pi 4, but I'm just going to take this fresh Raspbian build and try to install FreeCAD without the updates. So this is attempt number two. And off we go. And we can see it didn't turn out well. So let's play Minecraft. Not quite what I was hoping to have as the result here, but figured I'd blow off a little steam. So I'm going to try again. I'm going to try a different CAD. I want to try a Libra CAD. I am going to go ahead and do the full update. This takes quite a while, so I'm going to crop out the paint drying scenes for you here. And we rebooted after installing all the updates. Now we're going to make sure we install the latest driver for the video. This is an experimental driver on the Raspberry Pi, but it does give you some acceleration. Then you got to tweak some config settings, basically add more memory to the video and install the drivers. We're doing that here. Hundred and ninety two megs out of that one gig on the Raspberry Pi four. Install the drivers and reboot. I just wanted to check out Tinkercad performance now that we'd installed the drivers and added more memory to the video. Tinkercad's my go-to 3D option. Really easy to use and it's free. Plus being able to sign in with your Gmail account and use virtually any machine because it's browser based. That's handy. All in all, I'm impressed with the performance of the Raspberry Pi as an internet browser, etc. Let's see how it handles this complex object here. Maximizing the screen on the Raspberry Pi 4 seems to send it for a loop. I tried it in Minecraft and it didn't work and this I had to struggle a bit but you could see uh, I could manipulate that object. It was a little laggy but it was okay. I've experienced that same performance on my 2-in-1 tablet, Windows 10 tablet, etc. So here we're installing LibreCAD I'm going to go ahead and reboot and then we come back in and we're going to launch LibreCAD. Oh, thank goodness it launches pretty rapidly. Now again, this is just a 2D CAD program. I think this is an older version of LibreCAD too. I'm not sure. So you see here I'm drawing a rudimentary circle and I'm going to go over here and pick a rectangle shape. I'm not familiar with LibreCAD at all. I use an inexpensive Delta Cat on Windows myself, but uh, 
This seems to be very compatible with that. I'm just going to show you the file formats you can save out with LibreCAD. There you go. We'll save out. So anyway, I set out. I wanted to put the Raspberry Pi 4 through its paces and see if I could work some CAD on it. Wanted to give a shout out to Eunice at the Micro Center in Dallas. We had a couple of laughs when he was selling us this Raspberry Pi. So kudos to Micro Center in Dallas and Eunice. He was very fun to work with. I'd recommend the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi 4. I'm going to use it to run Octoprint on my new Ender 3 that I just assembled over the weekend. Anyway, comment, subscribe. Thank you very much.